G'day everybody and welcome back and welcome to the township of Orford on Tasmania's east coast. Uh, let's have a look at this showy GT Air 2 helmet that I purchased some months ago now. So I've had this for a while. Um, there's some good points and there is you know, some points that I, I think could do with some improvement. First of all, the, the, the look of the helmet, the finish and the fit. Uh, all very good, excellent quality construction, nice and light uh, comparatively for what it is. The graphics I think look fantastic, I particularly like this uh, snakeskin style thing that they've got on the back here that kind of changes between green and red depending on what angle you're looking at it from. Um, the visor is very good, the visibility is excellent. The Screen aperture is fantastic. I don't get any interference from the pin lock visor or anything as I have done on my previous helmets. So the ones before this were an AGV and a Nolan and I think before that I had a Shark. Uh, this in terms of fit and um, comfort is just top, top shelf um, to be honest. I don't get any interference from the pin lock the pin lock works beautifully, I don't get any fogging. Um, the sun visor is extremely easy to use. It's a nice dark visor and it comes down nice and low. The one on my AGV was a bit tricky and you had to really click this. Yeah, it was not as, not as user friendly as this. This is very, very good. The integrated Cena um, headset unit, the intercom unit is very good, uh, the sound is, is fantastic, the microphone is nice and clear, it, it integrates really well, so it's, you don't have this big bulbous thing hanging off the side of your helmet, but it does have a couple of drawbacks, one of which is this um, button arrangement. The button arrangement is very difficult or well, not very difficult, but can be tricky to use when you're wearing gloves, particularly if they're fairly heavy gloves. You've got to use the centre button and the plus button a bit and roll on and off to turn the thing on and off, and um, that can be a bit tricky. There's you know, a certain amount of seconds you have to hold a particular button to perform a particular function, and, and that can all get a bit clumsy as well. One thing I, I do a fair bit is listen to the FM radio, so I'll turn the thing on and then press the, the minus button for one second, I think it is, to listen to the radio. And then if you want to try and turn it up or down, if you accidentally hit the centre button at the same time, you start scrolling through searching stations and then I can't find it, get it back, and I, I find it a bit of a pain in the iris. So what I tend to do is turn it on, and then if I'm, before I try and turn my helmet off, I'll turn the radio off first rather than just being able to turn it off because you'll accidentally hit the bloody search function. That's a pain in the neck. The other thing I found is when I'm doing helmet to helmet com, um, comms, I had a pillion on the back um, a week or two ago and we were connected with an S, uh, 20S and this and I went into the music sharing function and the wind noise on the microphone would mute the, well, quieten down the music because it thought you were trying to speak over. And um, also at one point there, it, it did some weird lock up and my helmet wasn't showing any life at all, like no flashing LED but was obviously still connected somehow to my phone. It was all locked up, nothing would work, and I ended up having to power everything down, like my phone, um, to resolve that, that connection issue. The other problem with it is that the battery charging, um, on a 20S or any of the other senior units, you just unclip it from the helmet, plug it into the charger, and away you go. With this, you've got to plug the whole helmet in, uh, so that's a bit of a pain in the neck. The other downfall, and it is a big one, is... It's as noisy as f 
it is it's very very noisy a lot of wind noise um, it fits really tight it feels like it shouldn't make any noise but it does make noise and um, I've had a lot of trouble trying to get this microphone in here to um, for, for when I'm doing videos to um, not have any wind buffeting and I don't know if I can do it I think I'm gonna have to go for a different type of microphone because that one I'm struggling it is it is the biggest downfall for for me for this helmet and I guess it's a big problem when you can't try them in the shop um, they feel nice they fit tight on your head and you think oh this is gonna you know, they feel like they seal around your neck well and and you think this is gonna be good but Alas, it's just wind noise, and it's bad wind noise. The ventilation's very good. So that's my honest review of the Shoei GT Air 2. I think it's a fantastic helmet. It has a couple of little little faults, um, only that you know it's a bit clumsy to use on the on the Cine unit, and um, the wind noise is really bad. Everything else about the helmet is top shelf, fantastic. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment and I will catch you next time on Andy's Motorcycle Obsessions. Bye for now.